G'day and welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matt, I'm from DIY Data. Last Christmas I got an old advanced lathe from, it's an Australian made lathe from like the 60s or so. Um, came with an old motor that uh, had no speed control on it and you'd have to change the belts on the um, on the lathe which is kind of a bit of a hassle so what I've done is uh, switched it over to a uh, brushless motor which is actually designed for a sewing machine. There's a few of them on around but I thought I would show everybody what I've done so if anybody else is interested in doing a similar thing with a similar size lathe then there's a little bit more information for you. Okay so yeah so these motors are made for sewing machines um, cost me a hundred dollars for everything so the motor with the bracket the speed controller and the um, sensor, like the adjustment sensor. And this is the idea of this is it goes, it's a linkage that goes down to like your treadle for your um, sewing machine. It does have a few, few things that uh, kind of make it designed for a sewing machine, but hopefully this little lathe is uh, a lot more handy now. Well, it's just easy to use primarily, isn't it? Here's my four-jaw chuck. At some point I need to replace my three-jaw chuck. My little doobie what's it? Tool posts. As you can see, we can turn the lathe on to go quite slow, or uh, by moving this lever, we can set it to go quite fast. Um, I currently only have this speed controller set to 2000 RPM. The motor itself can do up to 4500 RPM. Um, obviously, there's a reduction happening in poise here, but I still feel like at full speed this lathe is running faster than it um, really should. At some point what I'd like to do is get a some kind of tachometer so I can measure the speeds because I think this lathe was okay for up to about uh, I want to say a thousand RPMs but I don't have no um, reference for that really. Some people uh, modify this or remove it and add a variable resistor um, across the, I think it's a Hall effect sensor in here, but I've chosen to keep this mechanism. First of all, it means there's zero modification that I need to do. And second of all, I've read somewhere that the voltages across here, while they're at like five volts, does sit on uh, mains potential so if you cross them basically if you earth it to a earth device I think it, you can get the full potential of the 240 volts so we're choosing to, choosing to run this unmodified which seems to be the safest and best way and uh, the way this works is actually it's fine, like it's really good actually. I like that um, control and I think it's probably better than having a potentiometer to control your speed most of the times because um, it allows you to all on quickly, all off instead of having to go. <coughs> um, the other thing you can do is if, if you want to go all on you don't want to go too fast. You can set that to the top speed you want, and that allows you to go. Yeah, so you can set the motor controller to the top speed you want to do, which is obviously 
motor speed, not um, spindle speed, but uh, it does allow you to set an upper limit on what you want to do and then have fine control. So I think that's going to work out really well the way this is set up. And it'll allow me to um, vary speed for doing things like drillings, um, knurling, things you want to go slow, slower at, and that. The cool thing is this actually gives you a readout of the um, spindle speed, not the spindle speed, the motor speed. And as I've got this set to 100, 1000 RPM, so the spindle will be doing 1000 RPM right now. Or if you slow it, motor, I keep saying spindle but I mean motor. Um, or if we want to go faster, we can up it back up to the peak which I've been running so far, which is 2,000. And I think that is going to work really well. I'm just going to go handheld a bit here. Um, so as we can see, the motor is currently um, bolted down via the bracket. So the really cool thing with this motor is it comes with the bracket. So it's got a mounting plate. There's no messing around to get it mounted. Literally um, over here, one of these I've got a screw going through the bracket um, onto the original holes for the original motor. The other one I actually had to drill a second hole for. Um, around the front here, I probably do need to bolt this down in some way. I was thinking about having some kind of just hook under there, kind of hook with a bolt on it that pulls it up. Because while this is currently pretty sturdy, I do feel like it's going to potentially snap back here at some point. So yeah, that's one thing I do need to do. And you can see up here there's a shield for the these motor pulleys and right now there is not a shield for this system and that's primarily because I haven't had the opportunity to modify the um, shield that goes with it. If I can work out where it is, it's down here actually, there is there is a shield that goes on, however, I need to cut out um, probably the big curve here, so kind of cut that section out, to give it enough room to kind of see if I can, so this sits about there, I need to kind of cut that bit out so it will go back on. So. That'll put me a nice safety shield, which will keep things safe. Um, the only reason I haven't done this yet is the last few days and probably the next week or two is actually going to be full of total fire bands. So that uh, doesn't really allow for very good um, metal working because I can't really bust out the angle grinder or anything. So. That's alright, I'm not going to be using this a terrible lot for the time being, but uh, until I get it done that should work. Um, so yeah, so it's a 550 watt, 3 quarter horsepower I think motor. Um, the motor that came off it is a 400 watt ish I think, or a half, half a horsepower um, motor. I don't know if the math adds up with that, but uh, yeah, so it's a half horsepower motor. It's really old, really heavy, kind of no speed control. It's really kind of the main reasons why I wanted to get it done. And with that little motor, it could potentially um, make it a bit more compact right now. There's a lot of space between the motor and the drive belts and stuff, but 
I'm more than happy with it for now in where it is, but I'll be playing around and see what else I need to modify to make it even better. Anyway, that's me for now. See you later. I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you next time.